When a narcissist is suddenly nice again, don't do this. Ever. As you reach the point of distancing yourself from the narcissist or contemplating ending the relationship, you may witness a sudden change in their behavior or a pretense of change. It's as if they put on a different mask, presenting a kind and pleasant side of themselves. They may act willing to attend therapy, making grand promises and proclaiming their determination to become a better person. This phenomenon applies to narcissists across various relationships, whether they are your partner, friend or even a parent. When they sense your departure looming and realize that you are their primary source of validation, they will employ every possible tactic to keep you within their grasp, even if it means suppressing their instinct to control and harm you. Their aim is to keep you close until they feel confident they can subject you to abuse once again, perpetuating the vicious cycle. Hello, and welcome to another captivating video. In this episode, we will delve into the intriguing topic of the narcissist's intensified displays of love and how to navigate these situations. Additionally, I will shed light on the mindset you should adopt when encountering such circumstances. If you find this topic intriguing, I invite you to subscribe, if you haven't already, as your subscription helps raise awareness about the complex issue of narcissistic abuse. Narcissistic relationships often follow a pattern consisting of three stages, idealization, devaluation and discard, or love bombing, devaluation and discard. The love bombing stage encompasses various dynamics. The narcissist adeptly weaves an illusion which you fall prey to. However, gradually they begin to devalue you, withdrawing the once lavish attention they bestowed upon you. You are subsequently ignored and their behavior takes a different turn. Finally, the discard phase ensues, manifesting in various ways. I won't delve into specific details here, but it is pivotal to grasp the cycle of idealization followed by devaluation and understand how it impacts your psyche. I will also offer strategies for navigating this cycle if you find yourself trapped within it. Ironically, the narcissist relies on you far more than you depend on them. They operate as psychological parasites, devoid of emotional depth or genuine connection. Their inner being lacks authentic emotions or spirituality, resembling a living body devoid of true vitality. Their interaction with the world mimics that of a shell devoid of depth. I hope this analogy resonates. They depend on your emotions to sustain their own emotional facade and to retain a semblance of existence. If you cease providing these emotions, they will wither away. That said, Releasing their hold on you is not an easy feat, especially if you serve as their primary source of support and validation. To them, you are an extension through which they derive life's experiences. They aspire to be what you represent, but cannot genuinely embody. Therefore, you hold significant importance in their lives. In essence, when you make the decision to leave and the narcissist detects the seriousness of your intentions, they embark on a performance, assuming the role of the person you always wished they could be. They alter their behavior in an attempt to keep you by their side. They make grand promises and may even partake in therapy. This facade can persist for an extended period, spanning months or, in rare cases, even years. Throughout therapy sessions, progress may appear minimal. They might subtly redirect the focus onto you or manipulate the situation by involving the therapist, particularly if the therapist lacks sufficient experience to recognize these tactics. On occasion, they may listen attentively and give the impression of change, but such transformations prove fleeting. Eventually, they relapse into their familiar patterns because it is intrinsic to their true nature. During these moments, when they appear to exhibit heightened affection for you, displaying caring actions and uttering the words you long to hear, it's essential to objectively observe their behaviours. 
You will then realise that these efforts are nothing more than ploys to ensnare and keep you captive. Their actions lack genuine emotional connection and are motivated by selfish desires. Their supposed efforts are not genuinely for your well-being, but rather to fulfil their own needs. Unfortunately, many survivors of narcissistic abuse fall into the trap of believing that everything will be fine and that the person they always desired has returned. Subsequently, you become trapped in a cycle of trauma, strengthening the bond and exacerbating the internal conflict known as cognitive dissonance. One part of you acknowledges that this person is monstrous and that you should escape, but they refuse to let go. They lure you back, fostering attachment and effectively immobilizing you. As you break free from their grip and witness their true monstrous nature once again, it amplifies your anguish. You oscillate between moments of fleeting respite and feeling utterly doomed. Persistent self-doubt and cognitive dissonance corrode your being, sabotaging your ability to take decisive action. If you find yourself in this predicament, I implore you to take a step back and scrutinize the underlying motives behind their behaviors. Reflect on what may be transpiring beneath the surface and consider the recurring patterns you have detected within the relationship. Pose challenging questions to yourself, such as, do I observe similar patterns of kindness followed by mistreatment? Examine how you discern that this time is different, that they genuinely desire change after years of displaying monstrous traits. Such an alteration seems incongruous, fueling rightful doubts regarding the authenticity of their words. Can you genuinely trust their proclaimed intentions? Take the opportunity to engage in journaling and profound introspection that explores these challenging inquiries. Utilize your rational thinking to resist the allure of their enticing promises, even if you have long yearned for affection. Recognize that your mind may tend to magnify their gestures disproportionately. Liberating yourself from the clutches of narcissistic abuse entails gaining clarity through introspection, unwaveringly questioning and analyzing the circumstances until your mind, soul and heart are unclouded. In summary, it is crucial to discern that when a narcissist seemingly demonstrates heightened affection towards you, it does not stem from genuine love. Their lavish attention during this period serves as a means to ensnare and keep you as their primary source of validation. Yet, you possess the power to resist their manipulations. Delve into the depths of your being, ask profound questions, seek support from trusted confidants or a therapist well-versed in the dynamics of narcissistic abuse, and make informed decisions based on your findings. That concludes today's episode, and I sincerely hope you found it enlightening and beneficial. If so, please share its insights with others who may also derive value from it. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode. Until then, may your healing journey commence and progress steadily.